Hi everyone, welcome back. So today's finally going to be the day that I'm sitting down. I have all of you guys' questions gathered together and I'm going to be answering everything there is to know about life in Qatar. Um, if you want to pronounce the country's name differently, that's fine. Qatar, 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 whatever you prefer to say, you understand the country that I'm talking about. So I put a question box on my Instagram maybe like a week ago and um, you guys have so, 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 so many questions about life over here in general. And on average, every single day, I answer at least a couple of them. So I thought instead of me responding to you guys one-on-one, -on -one, and sometimes, unfortunately, I do miss some direct messages as well, um, it's good to have like one video where everything is in one place and I answer you guys' questions all in one. There's just a few things that I want to mention before I get started. So if you follow me on Instagram, you would know that I moved here in 2015. I got a job offer here uh, by education. I'm an English teacher and I got lucky enough to be able to um, work here. Now, I wasn't initially super happy here because I think if you move anywhere in the world as a single girl, especially, it's gonna be very challenging and very hard because in the beginning, you just don't know anything. So for me personally, it was, you know, my first real job. It was my first time doing my driver's license, first time trying to rent a car, first time living on my own, um, so many firsts. So of course, in the beginning, it was so overwhelming. And at the same time, I didn't know anybody. So I didn't have any friends. So for the first time, I had to like remake new friends and all of this can be very stressful and very challenging. Um, I would say that for me it took about six months and as much as I've spoken to other expats um, Not everybody is happy at first, but all good things take time in my opinion So just because the move and the step is difficult It doesn't mean that the end outcome is not something amazing So if you fast forward like four or five years now, I couldn't be happier I'm so happy and so blessed to be living here um, and that's another thing I want to touch upon. So just because I love it and just because it makes me happy, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to make you happy. And of course, me loving life over here makes me also talk about it from a point of love. So of course, everything that I share is already through like pink glasses. Now that we got that out of the way, um, if you're interested about life over here, if you're interested about moving over here, maybe not necessarily Qatar, maybe Kuwait, United Arab Emirates, whatever. General rules in this side of the world, they're kind of similar. So a lot of the things that I'm going to be answering would apply to the rest of the Gulf area as well. Some of them maybe not specifically, but the majority, yes. The other thing that is very important to start off with is um, how are you able to live in Qatar? So for example, me as an Estonian, if I wanted to work somewhere else in Europe, it would be a lot easier. I could just, you know, take my bags, go to another country and then see how it goes, apply for jobs there, etc. However, um, most of the Gulf countries, so let's go into Qatar in specific because that's just what I know about, um, it works on a sponsorship system. So what does that mean? It basically means that every single foreigner who is in this country is traceable back to their sponsor. Now, what is a sponsor? Who is a sponsor? Basically, your sponsor can either be your company, so whoever you work for, or it can be a family member who, in turn, is sponsored by a company. So in the end, you're always going to be tracked down, basically, to somebody local who has taken the step and the responsibility to bring you into the country. So let's bring my example in specific to the picture so it becomes a little bit more clear. Maybe otherwise it's a little bit too confusing. So... Back in 2015, when I got a job offer, I did a Skype interview, by the way. And at the time, Estonians didn't get visa on arrival, which they do now. So I wasn't able to come to the country and actually like visit and see and do a live interview or anything like that. So I was hired from abroad. So my whole process started when I was back home. And it was up to me and the company to get all the paperwork ready in order for me to be able to enter the country and start working over here. Now... So in this scenario, who would be my sponsor? My sponsor was the school that hired me. So once I got my ID card, it would say name, date of birth, nationality, and then it's going to have um, a line that would say who is my sponsor, and my sponsor would be the owner of that school. Nowadays, there are so many countries who can obtain um, a tourist visa on arrival. Now, you cannot work on a tourist visa, obviously, 
However, if you want to see the country, see the feel, maybe attend some live interviews that you have lined up or visit some companies, you can totally do that. So it doesn't really work that you pack your bags, you come here, you rent an apartment and see how it goes. No, like everything, you have to have your ID card and you have to have a sponsor. Otherwise, you cannot really do much. You could not rent, you could not really build your life over here. So your best bet is to go online, start applying and see what your options are in whatever it is that you want to be hired for. The other option that I quickly mentioned, if your sponsor is not your company, then your sponsor could be your family member who is sponsored by their company. Now let's make that more specific as well. So for me, I used to be sponsored by my company. However, after I got married, I chose to be sponsored by my husband instead. That is an option. So for me, on my ID card, it would now say that I am sponsored by Haytham. So that's how I am able to work as a freelancer, for example. Otherwise, it would not be possible. But then Haytham's ID card is going to say um, his sponsor is the company and the owner of the company that he works for. So I hope that clarifies things a little bit. The whole country works on the sponsorship system. Uh, it might sound a little bit complicated in the beginning, but once you get it, it's really straightforward and easy to understand. But it's something that you need to know when you're considering moving to this part of the world. If you have any more questions regarding that, leave your questions in the comment box. I will try my best to answer them. And now I'm going to open up the questions that you guys asked me on Instagram. And I'm going to let you know that I chose the questions that A, were the most frequently asked and B, that I'm able to actually answer. So for example, me being an English teacher, a female in my 20s, like it, it, I'm more inclined to be able to answer questions that are kind of relatable to me. So when you guys ask me, for example, about specific job opportunities for, let's say, pediatric surgeons or like, um, I don't know, a civil engineer, I am honestly not able to answer these questions because I sincerely just don't know. Um, Google is going to be able to help you a lot more than me. So I am choosing the questions that I feel I can shed my like two cents on because I've lived here for a while. So maybe I do have some information that you might not know. So hopefully I'm going to do the answers justice and your questions justice and answer them correctly. <laughs> Even if you're not interested to emigrate over here, I hope you find this video interesting. Maybe you just want to know how life is like over here uh, because of course every place you go to is different. So I'm going to open up the questions now and start answering them. Is driving in Qatar as bad as they say it is? Honestly, I don't think it's bad at all. I did my driver's license in Qatar, so I failed in Estonia actually. I came here and I was super determined. I went like five or six times a week before work and I got my driver's license here and I honestly enjoy driving here. There's so many highways and you can like, you know, drive your car in a nice speed and listen to something cool. Like I enjoy driving here. If you're scared, my only tip would be like, just move out of the left lane and everything's fine. Is it that hot over there? Um, so it, okay, <laughs> how do I answer this one? So basically for me as an Estonian, I escaped a country that has like cold and winter and everything and I feel it's like same, same, but different. So there's a season in the rest of the world. Like, let's say if you're from Canada, you have a few months that you don't really want to go out. It's so cold. The weather is really harsh. So it's the same over here, except it happens with heat instead of cold. Um, so the weather is perfect from end of October until April. So for me, it justifies everything. Like the majority of the year is amazing. And then you have those months that are really, really, really difficult because it does get really hot. It gets like 50 degrees Celsius. It's really, really, really hot. Um, but the country does a lot to organize like all kinds of events and activities, etc. And then like to keep us busy, basically. And the rest of the year that the weather is amazing, like for example, right now, it's like 25, 26, 27 Celsius every single day. It's just amazing. Everybody spends all their time outdoors and uh, enjoys this time to the maximum. So you kind of have a balance. For me personally, even though it's super hot outside in summer, I still wake up so much happier if I see sunlight, if I see a blue sky, as opposed to if I see snow and if I see like a gray sky. It's just me. Do most people know English or do you have to know at least some of the native language? I'm so glad that somebody asked this because I answered this question a lot. I feel it's like a stereotype. People think that you need to know Arabic in order to live here or to function here. You do not. You need to know English though. Um, so locals here are less than 20%. So the country is made up basically entirely, majorly of expats. 
Um, everybody knows English, but not everybody knows Arabic. So if I go to a restaurant, it's very likely that the waiters, the staff, nobody is going to know Arabic, so it's not really going to help me. I want to teach there. Do I need teaching experience? I'm from the UK. Now, this question I chose because I feel I am able to answer it because I used to be a full-time teacher. However, the other questions about other fields of work, I didn't screenshot them and I'm not going to be talking about them because I just don't know about other job fields. I really honestly don't know and I'm not going to pretend to know. So in order to teach here, it used to be okay just to have a teaching certificate or something you even did online. Um, however, now they want you to have at least two years of experience and a degree in whatever it is that you're going to be teaching. So a minimum of a bachelor's degree. So my recommendation, even though it's really hard to get a job if you don't have any experience, it's really important to have experience on your CV. So what I did personally is that after I finished university, like after my classes, I mean, I would go and I would work in like kindergartens or volunteer or do this and that, anything that would grant me something that I could add to my CV as experience. It, it really, really does help. So wherever you can gain some experience, try to go out and do that. How do you find a job in Qatar? You could use Bait, you could use LinkedIn, and I just Googled. I Googled a lot. I Googled every day. And I opened a list of schools and sent my CV everywhere, even when there was no job offer. So that's what I did. I don't know if that's good advice or a good tactic or not. Maybe business owners don't like that. But that's what I did. Um, honestly, other than that, there's no really secret websites or anything like agencies that anybody uses that I know of. I also applied for more than a year everywhere and I didn't really receive any responses exactly because I had very little experience on my CV. If you're qualified and you have a good CV, I think you have a good chance in getting recognized and noticed. You just have to um, apply, 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 apply and be consistent. If no one responds to you after a while, remind yourself like you have to be very um, pushy. Is it easy to make friends? How to make friends? Um, I think that depends on the person and that depends on you, honestly. So for me, when I read this question, my initial reaction is, yes, it was so hard to make friends. And then I asked the same question from my husband and he's like, no, it wasn't hard at all. So it really depends. So for me, when I came to Qatar, I was like kind of depressed because everything was new for me and I didn't really know what am I doing, where am I, etc. Uh, so I was also not very active or like proactive going out trying to meet people and making friends. Um, so my first friends were obviously my colleagues, which is going to happen to you if you're going to move abroad for your job. Uh, it's a little bit more hard if you move abroad, um, you know, as a plus one. So basically, if your spouse gets a job and you move with them and you don't have a job yet, it's a lot more difficult. So your job surroundings will be kind of the first people that you meet. So after I got friends from my job, then I would take on some sports. So I would meet people through sports so, or hobbies. Like I, I really like that about Qatar is whatever you're into, like whatever hobby you have, be it knitting or crochet or macrame or kite surfing or like CrossFit, whatever it is, there is a group of people for every kind of hobby. So basically get into any of those groups and you're going to make yourself some friends. Honestly, the majority of the friends that I've made in Qatar are through my Instagram, like even my best friend, like almost everyone I know is through Instagram. So I don't know, find people, message them, meet up, like go to meetups on Facebook. There's a lot of groups like expats in Doha, ladies in Doha, moms in Doha. So there are ways, but you need to be a little bit proactive as well. Is it expensive to live there? Now, let's say I got like 500 questions. I would say like 450 were this question. Is it expensive? Is it expensive? Is it expensive? Is it expensive? So I understand it's a very valid question, but it seemed like the most asked question ever. So I think it's very, it depends. Like there's no one answer fits all in this. So last week we had some guests from Norway, for example, um, and they said eating out in Qatar is actually cheaper than eating out in Norway. Um, and like when me and my husband visited Switzerland last year, we found it so expensive, even though we know we live in Qatar, which is a very expensive country in general, I think. So it really depends where you're coming from. However, it doesn't seem as expensive if you live and work over here. If you earn in the local currency and if you get the benefits um, of living and working over here, uh, especially that salaries in Qatar are um, tax-free. So whatever you make, you don't pay tax from it. And if you're hired from abroad, 
there's always allowances in your salary. So there would be accommodation allowance, probably transportation allowance, etc. So salaries here are divided into like sectors or um, different parts. So yes, it's expensive, but also you choose what kind of lifestyle you live over here. Like you can have lunch for one euro, but you can have lunch for 20, 50 or 100 euros. So it really depends where you go and what kind of lifestyle you live. Is it easy to find an apartment or a house? Yes, it's very easy because like I said, it's such an expat community. Like all my friends are foreigners. Um, if we have a barbecue in our house, I'll easily have like 20 nationalities in my living room. So that's the one thing that I really love about living over here. Uh, the multiculturalism is just like, ugh, I love it. Um, would you ever buy an apartment or a house? Probably not. Um, before it was not even possible for an expat to own property over here. Uh, it's now possible in certain areas, but it is very expensive. So I personally don't know a single foreigner who would own an apartment or a house over here. It's just, it's not very common, but it's possible in certain areas. Do you ever feel unsafe as a female? Never. I would rate Qatar as the safest country in the world, at least where I've been to. It's, I used to go for 4 a.m. jogs like after Fajr. <laughs> Um, I really, it's very, very, very safe. And I think it's largely also due to that sponsorship system that I talked about before. Um, every person who is in the country is accounted for. So yeah, it's really safe. How does the visa process work? Um, whoever hires you is going to take care of all of this for you. So they would tell you exactly which document you need, what you need to do exactly. But in a nutshell, you basically need to translate all your documents like diplomas and certificates into English and Arabic, have them attested. And you also need like your criminal record um, from the government that basically says you haven't committed any crimes and stuff. So then all these documents would be taken to the necessary governmental places over here. And then once that's done, um, you would have the ability to enter the country, get a residency, and then start working over here. When is the best time to travel to Qatar? Definitely like, I said end of October, so like November to April is perfect. Now is perfect. What are we? First of March, second of March, beginning of March. Now is amazing. Like ugh, so amazing. <laughs> Can everyone just move there, or do you need to have a minimum amount of money? Uh, no, you don't need a minimum amount of money. So if somebody hires you, then no, you can come with zero dollars on your bank account. It's not a criteria in order to come. I have been to Doha a couple of times and it's really humid and hot. How do you deal with it? Then you just came in the wrong season. You came in that season where it's really, really hot. So you just have to know when to visit. Um, and then you're not going to struggle with that. I heard it's a bit boring living there as a single girl moving on your own. I strongly disagree. However, I've heard this comment so many times. So as a tourist, I would get bored. Like for example, if I have guests, I don't really know what to do with them more than a week, two maximum. But if you have your life here, you have your hobbies, you have your things to do, you have like your sports, your work, your like your life, your friends, then no, it doesn't get boring. Like there's a lot of things to do. Um, as a single girl moving on your own, I think you might be more lonely than bored. Because once you have a group of friends, there, there's a lot of things to do. Are there lots of mosques and prayer facilities at restaurants and malls, for example? Yes, everywhere. Like I'd say 99% of the places have prayer rooms. What do you think it's like bringing up children over there? I feel like it's a very privileged lifestyle. I would actually consider it a blessing to bring my kids up here. Like my husband, for example, is born and raised in Kuwait, which is a very similar um lifestyle and he turned out really nicely <laughs> um so yes it is a privileged lifestyle materialistically but i think core values come from home but on the other side like always focus on the positive so i feel it's a privilege to raise my children in a place where i know she will have classmates who are like Chinese and African and European and American and Australian. And like, she's already going to be brought up with a sense of mindset that, you know, everybody's different and we accept people of different faiths and culture, etc. And she's going to have so many different friends and so many different things to talk about and learn about. So I focus on that more than anything else. Can you get by without a car? You can, but I prefer not to. Like, if you have the ability to get a car, get a car. Uh, Uber and Karim are very, very easily accessible and quite affordable. Um, 
but when I got my car at first I rented a car and it just made such a big difference like I feel like I was finally independent like if at midnight you just feel like I want to go out and buy some milk you can <laughs> it's cool what would you recommend to someone who wants to move to Qatar I think the same advice I would give to you if you moved anywhere in the world. So sometimes I get messages from ladies who are like really upset and they don't want to be here and they just want to go back home and they compare everything to how it was like at home. And I did that in the beginning as well. I was like, oh no, but at home it costs this much and at home we did it like this. But you took the step to move here. So I, I think it's important that you embrace the change and you focus on the positive. And even if you're upset today, Try to wake up tomorrow with a positive mindset to make the most out of it because there's nothing to do but learn and grow. And in the end, when you look back, I'm sure it was beneficial to you somehow. So for whatever reason, God has made you emigrate to that other place right now. So keep an open mind and try to make the most out of it instead of just being stuck at how things used to be or how they used to be at home. Um, I wish someone gave me this advice in the beginning because I was really grumpy as well. Um, I was like, I don't know anything and, nah, 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 nah. and it's very easy to complain but I think as long as you keep an open mind and you want to learn and you want to make the most out of it, it's going to be a great experience for you to just, you know, grow as a person. Is it difficult to get a job there without a university diploma? Do most places require a diploma? So yes, the sponsorship system that I talked about. Now imagine if you're a local person who is going out to seek for an employee from another country and takes the responsibility in front of the government to basically write down their name that they will take care of you and they're responsible for you of course they need some kind of security that that person is worth it so that it's a good investment for them basically so it is difficult to get a job without a diploma without a qualification just for that reason because um the paperwork can be a little bit of a headache and it costs a lot of money actually to hire someone from abroad and bring them here. So you should be qualified in whatever it is that you're working at in order for someone to want to bring you into the country and, you know, be responsible for you. Is it easy to get a job if you are a foreigner? Well, almost the whole country is made up of foreigners. So I would say yes, but it's not easy to get a job. Like I, I don't think anywhere in the world you would say oh, it's so easy to get jobs there. Um, but as long as you are hardworking and you show a good character um, and hopefully you're qualified as well, then why not? What do you love most about it? I love that I can wake up every single day and the sky is blue and the sun is shining and that puts me in a really good mood. I love that I've made friends from all around the world I have Korean friends, I have Arab friends, I have American friends, I have European friends, I have African friends, um, I have Australian friends, I met people from New Zealand, I met people from China. So I really enjoy being around different people. Uh, what else do I love about it? I love that it's safe and I love that I'm accepted for who I am and nobody is trying to change me. What are the top five unique places to see in Qatar? The Pearl. Suq Waqif, Katara, the desert. If you come here, go check out the desert. It's such a cool experience. And one of the national museums, like the National Library, the National Museum, or the Islamic Art Museum. Those are like incredible. Maybe Banana Island. Is rent expensive in general? Yes, I would say rent is the highest expense. So food, it depends on where you eat, how you eat, etc. But rent in general is expensive. Like let's say a two bedroom would be anywhere between a thousand and three thousand dollars depending on area finishing quality etc but rent is is expensive however a lot of companies would sponsor your accommodation so it really depends on what kind of job contract are you coming in with do most apartments come furnished you can find both furnished unfurnished you can find everything so that's one thing i didn't mention before also here, if you get a job contract, it's very common that your contract will say that the company will provide for you to go back home once a year. So they would cover your plane ticket as well. And it's very common that they would cover some part of your accommodation at least. Maybe they'll give you an allowance of an X amount or they will put you in company accommodation. That's usually um, the norm. So in the beginning, you don't have to go out and, oh my God, how am I going to rent an apartment? I don't know how to rent an apartment. I don't know anything because it's going to take some time for your ID card to get ready and you can't rent without your ID card. So in the beginning, the company 
uh, will take care of you. Don't you feel lonely? You're living in a place which is not your home, your country, your family, your friends. I don't feel lonely. No, I did in the beginning, but I got over it. But also I'm accustomed to being on my own a lot more than the next person. Like I don't mind being on my own. Like I make jokes, I laugh, we have a good time. <laughs> um and i would call this my home now like for now it's my home i learned not to associate the word home to a specific place but rather the feeling and where like my loved ones are so of course i miss my family back home but i'm here with my husband and i'm blessed to have him and i've made new friends so now i have friends from around the world so that's cool i'm not lonely no is it an islamic country yes it is um However, like it does come with its perks, but also I've noticed if you're a minority in another country, it's much easier to keep on top of things as opposed to when you live in an Islamic society where everyone around you is Muslim anyway, it's quite easy to get lazy. So it depends on you as a person, what keeps you the strongest. I visited Qatar during a layover on my way to Sydney and I was told you need to be rich in order to live in Qatar. That is not true because just like any other country in the world, all kinds of professions exist over here so obviously not everybody is rich i really want to move to qatar but i can't find any jobs despite despite applying everywhere i think it's it's hard to hear sometimes when we have our own plan for our own self so that was me in the past i had my own plan for my own life and when it didn't go the way i wanted to go i was so upset and so disappointed but obviously like not every person in the world is meant to emigrate to qatar let's say for example so i think it's important that we understand that maybe our plan is not god's plan so we try our best and i would suggest you pray on it and uh, just keep being persistent like for me like i said i applied for more than a year to hundreds and hundreds of places and in the end i got one job offer so um just keep at it if it's something that you really want but also keep an open mind that maybe your destiny is guiding you somewhere else how is the medical system over there so you can have public health care if you pay 100 rials in a year, which is like $25 a year, and you will be assigned to your nearest health center. So they would provide health care, which is a good option. Um, if you don't want to go for public health care, you can get private health insurance, which will give you access into private hospitals. Or like me and my husband, we don't have a health insurance, for example. So we pay per visit when we go to private clinics, but sometimes we also go to public. So you can mix as well. How is the living condition over there? What are the pros and cons about living in Qatar? I think I said so many pros already, uh, but cons would be doesn't really have a lot of nature. So if you're someone who is used to hiking and biking and greenery and all of these things every single day, and you just feel like Maria Von Trapp and the hills are alive and all of these things, then you're probably not going to like it because there's not a lot of greenery over here. Um, the cons also would be that you're obviously away from family so i think that's about it for questions right now i'm trying to think if there's anything else i want to say but i can't think of anything else right now i hope this video was helpful whether or not you want to relocate or not sometimes it's just interesting to learn how life works like in other countries uh it is definitely different than what i'm used to the majority of my life but i've gotten used to the system i've gotten used to life over here and i honestly enjoy it like you all guys know like you all guys know like you all know no country is perfect no place in the world is ever going to be perfect but for now i'm happy here um it is not a place where people usually come forever for expats they usually come here for a couple of years to work um and then they go back to their home countries because you can never become a citizen uh unless your father is qatari so um that's another con i guess so even if you're born here it doesn't really give you citizenship so that's why most people wouldn't buy property over here they're just here for work for whatever amount of time one year two year five year ten years twenty years but eventually the majority of people move on there's ways around it and i know some people who do stay longer but that's a more rare case so yeah I hope you enjoyed this video and it gave you some insight into life in Qatar and how to live here or how to get a job here. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope, uh, I hope and pray I answered all of the questions correctly. I answered to the best of my knowledge. Um, if you're ever around, maybe we'll run into each other because it's a really tiny country. I mean, Qatar basically is just Doha. Uh, it's a small place. It's a cute place. And, um, Wherever life takes you, I wish you the best of luck. And if you have any other questions or anything 
you want to ask, maybe write it in the comments below and let me know what kind of other videos you would like to see on my channel because I'm really trying to be more active on YouTube. So thank you for watching. And if you haven't subscribed already, please do. And I'll see you in my next one. Bye. Salam. <laughs>